make sure to hit the subscribe button before moving on and also don't forget to check out these amazing merch which I have designed by myself it would be really nice if you consider buying any of these this video is about gout and it was suggested by Gara gout comes under crystal induced arthritis so there will be deposition of crystals in the joints causing arthritis gout is characterized by transient attacks of acute arthritis which means there will be episodes or short lasting episodes of acute inflammation of joints and there will be deposition of crystals which are called as monosodium urate crystals within the joints leading to damage of cartilage as well as the synovium leading to excruciating pain this is what is called as gout so remember that the deposition of crystals within the joints leading to arthritis. There are two main types of gout, primary gout, secondary gout. Primary gout is the one in which there will be uh, the main feature of the disease will be gout only. For example, there's a, an, uh, there's a uh, inherited disease in which there will be, uh, which is characterized by deficiency of an enzyme called HGPRT. Uh, I'll be talking about this uh, in, a, in a while. So in the deficiency of this enzyme, there will be manifestation of uh, gout as a primary feature. So in, that, in those kind of uh, conditions, it is called as primary gout. Whereas in secondary gout, there will be some underlying disease condition, which will be manifested by various manifestations. Okay, for example, take chronic renal disease, there will be manifestations of various uh, uh, features because of chronic renal disease. In addition to that, there will also be gout in those patients. So, if gout occurs secondary to some other condition, it is called as secondary gout. Okay. So, uh, just reminding you once again, uh, we're gonna see about the pathogenesis of gout in a bit detail. But before that, uh, the basic is that the gout is characterized by transient attacks of acute arthritis which is because of deposition of monosodium butyrate crystals inside the joint. Now in a bit detail, the principal thing which happens in gout is hyperuricemia, which means there will be elevated levels of uric acid in the patient's blood. The level, if, it, if the level of uric acid goes about 6.8 mg per deciliter, it is called hyperuricemia and it can predispose the patient to gout. The, uh, the hyperuricemia can occur because of two reasons. One is increased synthesis of uric acid which can occur in conditions where there is increased cellular turnover and it can also uh, occur in conditions uh, where the patient takes high protein diet. Okay, And there can also be decreased excretion of uric acid because of uh, renal failure and some other conditions. So what will happen is there will be increased accumulation of uric acid in the body leading to hyperuricemia. Now, hyperuricemia leads to formation of monosodium urate crystals within the giant cavity in the synovium, the synovial cavity, okay? And this will cause, uh, this will trigger the macrophages which are present in the joint cavity. And these macrophages will phagocytose, uh, the phagocytose or swallow the crystals which are present in the joint cavity. This will release various inflammatory mediators like interleukins, especially interleukin 1 beta. These interleukins will cause damage of the uh, joint ca cavity, including the cartilage as well as the synovium, and lead to the release of enzymes like proteases, which will cause uh, further destruction of the joint. Now, these crystals can also activate a complement pathway, which can trigger the chemotaxis or recruitment of neutrophils to the joint cavity. The interleukins released from macrophages can also do this process of recruiting or causing chemotaxis of neutroph neutrophils to the joint cavity. Okay, and once these neutrophils are recruited, they can also phagocytose the um, the neutrophil the, the crystals. Okay, these neutrophils can phagocytose the crystals, and they release various inflammatory mediators like leukotriene B4, prostaglandins, free radicals, and various other ar arachidonic acid derivatives, which are inflammatory mediators. These inflammatory mediators causes further recruitment of neutrophils to the joint, the joint space, further worsening the condition. And the, the, the neutrophils which are phagocytosed, the crystals, will lyse, uh, which means they rupture, and they release the uh, crystals to the joint cavity, 
these crystals are engulfed by further neutrophils and the cycle goes on and once they uh, once they release once they rupture and release the crystals the neutrophils will release various lysosomal enzymes so all of these factors like release of proteases leukotriene b4 prostaglandin free radicals and the lysosome enzymes and so many other factors contribute to the formation of uh, arthritis in gout leading to joint inflammation the most common site where gout occurs is the first metatarsophalangeal joint okay so just try to remember this picture or if you can copy this picture to note it's fine or else you can take a screenshot of it and you can revise it later and don't forget to hit the like button right now okay now let's talk about hgprt deficiency in a bit detail hgprt stands for hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase this enzyme is very important in the salvage pathway where the excess of purines will be recovered okay so what happens is if the enzyme is deficient if this enzyme is deficient the salvage pathway will not take place efficiently and there will be uh, excess breakdown of the purines to uric acid to be excreted but because of the increased production of the uric acid it will cause hyperuricemia okay so if there is partial deficiency of hgprt enzyme what will happen is that there will just be gout and there won't be much of other clinical features but if there is total deficiency of the of this enzyme hgprt in addition to gout there will be a major neurological manifestations so these neurological manifestations will be very dominant than gout so people will care less about the gout in these kind of patients because of the severe neurological manifestations on which they'll be more focused on so this total deficiency of hgprt deficient uh, of the enzyme hgprt enzyme comes under secondary gout because in this condition the, the gout is not the only clinical feature which is happening the main clinical feature is neurological manifestations okay and the total deficiency of hgprt enzyme leads to a syndrome known as lesh nyhan syndrome okay in which there will be neurological manifestations accompanied with gout just try to remember the lesh nyhan syndrome okay also there are various factors which contribute to the development of gout uh, okay, so first of all, the synovial fluid is a poor solvent of the monosodium urate crystal. So the crystals cannot be solubilized easily, so they'll deposit as crystals within the joint cavity. The lower temperature favors uh, deposition of or, or precipitation or formation of crystals. Okay, that's why uh, the gout, uh, the formation of uh, gouty crystals are more common in distal extremities where the temperature is lower compared to the uh, the the, uh, the proximal joints okay so that's why there's more common distal joints like the metatarsophalangeal joints okay and there are certain nucleating agents uh, the nucleating agents are the ones which favor the form precipitation or formation of crystals in the joints and these includes insoluble collagen fibers chondritin sulfate proteoglycans cartilage fragments and all that these factors are nucleating agents which will enhance formation of crystals within the joint cavity leading to formation of gout okay just try to remember these points there are various predisposing factors which are uh, which lead to the formation of gout this includes age gout is very ca common in old age okay like more than age what is more important is the duration of hyperuricemia the duration of hyperuricemia is very important if the patient is an if the patient has hyper hyperuricemia for about 20 or 30 years uh, what will happen is that uh, these patients are more prone to develop gout okay alcohol is another very important risk factor you'll see many patients will be saying that they they were fine very fine uh, they're totally fine the previous day they had uh, they went to a party had lots of alcohol the next morning when they woke up, they woke up with excruciating pain in the first metatarsophalangeal joint and that is a predisposing factor. The alcohol being responsible for that, okay? So alcohol is a predisposing factor for gout and there are certain genetic disorders like I have mentioned the Lesh-Nyhan syndrome which is characterized by HGPRT enzyme deficiency leading to formation of gout and the, there are certain drugs like thi thiazides which are diuretics which can also predispose the patient to develop gout. Lead toxicity uh, leads to a specific form of gout known as Saturnine gout. Okay, 
So these are some of the important predisposing factors for gout. The, the pathognomic finding which appears in the joints of gout patients are known as tophi. Tophi are nothing but large aggregations of urate crystals. Okay, there will be large aggregation of urate crystals. So because of accumulation of these crystals, there will be excess of inflammation. So they are surrounded by an intense inflammatory reaction of foreign body giant cells. These foreign body giant cells basically try to engulf the foreign bodies which are basically the urate crystals right here so this is what is called as tophi okay the tophi are large aggregations of urate crystals surrounded by an intense inflammatory reaction of foreign body giant cells so the clinical course of gout goes in the following four stages but they need not go in the following four stages in all the times but this is what happens most of the time most of the time what happens is there will be a phase of asymptomatic hyperuricemia. For example, it, this can last for about 20 or 30 years also. The patient will be having hyperuricemia but there won't be any symptoms. The patient will be perfectly alright. And on one fine day, the patient that has any precipitating factor like large, if, if the patient consumes large volume of alcohol the previous day or if he takes high protein diet uh, or if the patient has any other predisposing factor, for example, if the patient takes chemotherapy for leukemia, this chemotherapy causes excess of cell destruction leading to excess of purine formation and the purines will be broken down to form excess of uric acid and these are various predisposing factors, okay? These are some of the factors which causes precipitation of an attack of gout, okay? If these factors are present, there will be formation that, that will lead to acute arthritis and that is where the patient will have ex excruciating pain, severe excruciating pain which will cause um, disabling of the patient and the patient will be able to, unable to uh, walk freely with that severity of pain and the, the patient most of the time will seek for medical attention at this stage because of the severe excruciating pain. This pain can last for uh, minutes or hours or even days, but most commonly it lasts for a few hours, okay, and This uh, acute arthritis is usually self-resolving or it can resolve with medications Once it resolves the patient will be perfectly all right and for, for a particular period of time and this period of time is called asymptomatic intercritical period this period is uh, this duration uh, this time is actually very important if you want to prevent further attacks of gout for this patient, we have to give proper medical attention and personal lifestyle modifications for this patient like avoiding alcohol or high protein diet um, and we should check for various predisposing factors for gout and make sure to eliminate those predisposing factors so that there won't be a recurrence of gout in these patients. So this asymptomatic intercritical period is very important and this can last for about uh, 12 years or even up to uh, 20 years or it depends on the patient if the patient uh, if, if the patient is not given proper medical attention or lifestyle modifications they can develop chronic tophaceous gout if they develop chronic tophaceous gout what happens is that there will be, de the, the, be excessive deposition of tophi within the joints okay within the cartilage within the synovium and also in the joint space into chronic tophaceous gout and this is disabling for the patient so we should try the most to prevent the formation of chronic tophaceous gout if the if the patient has acute arthritis and once it resolves with medications there will be asymptomatic intercritical period we'll make sure that uh, we give them proper medical attention as well as proper lifestyle modifications in the asymptomatic intercritical period so they'll not be uh, they'll not develop or progress to chronic tophaceous gout Hope that uh, hope that makes it uh, hope that makes it clear for you. In uh, in certain cases, the excess of uric acid can also uh, the excess of urate can also deposit in the kidneys, leading to gouty nephropathy, which is uh, which which is which varies in intensity in various patients. It can just cause renal colic in certain patients, and it can also progress to renal failure in a certain group of patients. Okay, so hyperuricemia should be controlled uh, in every gout patients. Okay, we came to the end of this video. You can follow me on Instagram at Medwitz Med Simple One. I can you can follow my, uh, like my Facebook page and you can check out my blog. And uh, um, I'll be posting quiz questions on Instagram. So make sure to follow my Instagram page. 
and don't forget to check out the merch and it'll be very nice if you consider buying any of these thank you so much for watching and in the next video i'll be probably talking about pseudo gout and after that i'll make video on pharmacotherapy of gout okay so make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so that you not miss out uh, when i post an, a next video and hit the like button on this video and share this with your friends and tell them to subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next video